नेक्स्ट वी कम टू अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइट दैट इज द ह्यूमन आई वॉट इज इन साइड आर आईज तो यू नो वी सी थिंग्स ओनली वेन द लाइट कमिंग फ्रॉम द ऑब्जेक्ट एंटर्स आर आईज वेन एवर द लाइट फ्रॉम द ऑब्जेक्ट एंटर्स आर आईज ओनली देन वी आर एबल टू सी द ऑब्जेक्ट एंड इट इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सेंस ऑर्गन सो इन दिस सेक्शन वी विल स्टडी वट इज़ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ आई वॉट आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट्स एंड देयर फंक्शन एंड वॉट शुड बी डन टू टेक केयर ऑफ द Now, when we see the eyes from front, they look like this, and uh, the eye which we see is actually round in structure, and it is a bigger part. If you see this picture, the eyes look smaller, but actually the size of the eyeball will be a bigger size. But from outside, they look small because the main part of the eye is covered in this area. and this part of the eye is only visible to us the remaining part of the eye is hidden inside the bone of the head and it gives protection to the eye in this picture you can see that there are some labeling shown eyelid everyone knows pupil is there sclera and iris we'll see in the more parts of the eye the front part of the eye which looks black is the main part of the eye the white part of the eye does not allow light to pass through it so the black portion of the eye which we see and it gives color to the eye is the main part through which the light enters the eye this is the structure of the eye which has been shown as a transfer section where the human eye which is a ball like structure has been cut from the side if we see the outermost wall of the eyeball is called as sclera so this part of the eye which is seen as the outermost layer of the eye is the sclera which has been shown in this picture so this layer is opaque at the at the back does not allow light to pass through it but in front this layer is transparent so this part of the eye which is seen it is transparent and it allows light to pass through it so light can enter inside but the layer becomes opaque at the back and it does not allow light to pass through the eye so whatever light enters inside does not go back and the image is seen clearly the second layer of the eye is choroid so this layer is supplied with blood vessels and it is supporting the scler uh, the sclera layer the sclera gives shape to the eye and does not allow eye to squeeze so the two layers are joined together and the innermost layer of the eye is the retina which is the which is shown in this figure this retina is just like the camera film on which the image is formed it is supplied with blood vessels and these blood vessels are connected to the the circulatory system now retina is the third layer of the eye after that we start from the back of the eye that is this portion of the eye from where we are seeing the back side so three layers we have seen one is the retina then we have i have told about the choroid and the sclera which has been shown here but it is at the back also then the retina which is a layer which is innermost layer has been shown as the yellow layer inside this layer is supplied with blood vessels now in front in front the layer the human eye is showing the layer which is right in the front is shown as the iris it is the part of the eye which gives color to the eye the eyes are brown or green or blue depending upon the iris the iris controls the amount of light entering the eye the center of the eye exactly in the middle of the eye there is an opening which is called the pupil so this allows light to pass through it it is an opening through which the light goes inside and enters the retina so when the light enters inside it reaches the retina and then the image is formed 
so iris controls the size of the pupil and allows the light to enter inside the next part of the eye is the cornea this cornea is a transparent layer which is continuation of the sclera so this cornea helps the light to scatter so that the light reaches inside the eye evenly this cornea is the very important part of the eye people you must have heard about eye donation so when people donate the eye this part of the eye is donated mainly the whole eye is not donated the cornea is the main part which is donated next layer next part of the eye is the lens is the uh, the lens which has been shown in the figure this lens is a convex lens and the function of the lens is to change the size of the image it refracts the ray of light and focuses the light properly on the retina and this lens is connected to the iris and the function of the lens is that it helps to control the size of the image focus the image so that the image falls on the retina and the image is formed at the right place so that is the function of the lens the next part of the eye is shown here as ciliary muscles what does the ciliary muscle do these ciliary muscles which are shown here they control the size of the eye lens and the size of the eye lens means when we are seeing an object which is near our eyes and the object which is far away from your eyes that is controlled by the size of the lens and the size or the thickness of the lens is controlled by the ciliary muscles so these control the thickness of the lens so that the image is focused on the retina at the right place the next part of the eye which is shown in this figure is this part which is called the optic nerve this is continued and joined to the retina and its function is an it is a nerve which takes the image from the eye to the brain and the image is formed on the brain then there are few more parts shown here that is the vitreous humor has been shown here and the aqueous humor so these are two liquids the vitreous humor which is shown pink here this part of the eye is not hollow it is filled with a thick jelly like substance the function of this liquid is to control and uh, adjust the size of the eye so that the eye does not shrink and the next is the liquid which is in front of the eye which is the aqueous humor this aqueous humor controls the size of the eye lens and the cornea in front and keeps the shape of the eye proper then one more part which has been shown here and it is not labeled here is this part of the eye which is shown which is called the yellow spot it is called the yellow spot because it is the most it is the most bright part of the eye where whenever any image falls that image is sharp and the image falls clearly on the retina and then it forms a sharp image it is the most sensitive part of the eye just next to the yellow spot is another part which is called the blind spot yellow spot is the part which is shown at this part it is here and the part which is just above the yellow part optic nerve leaves that is the blind spot so this part which is called the blind spot this part is the blind spot which i am labeling as b so this is the blind spot if any image falls on this part then the image is not formed and the person is not able to see so yellow spot which is formed here it is the part where the image falls directly opposite to the lens the image falls sharply at the yellow spot and it is the brightest part of the eye where the image is formed clearly and blind spot which is b is the least sensitive part of the eye 
if any image falls on this part then the image is not seen clearly these are the main parts of the eye whose functioning is according to the diagram look into your friend's eye if you see someone else's eye you will see the size of the pupil that is the black part of the eye when we throw light on the pupil the pupil is the black part of the eye which controls the amount of light entering the now in this you can see pupil is the black part of the eye which is shown in the middle of the eye it is the part through which the light enters inside now if we are standing in a area where the light around us is very less then the part of the pupil which is shown here it divert it expands it starts expanding starts expanding mean its size starts increasing outwards so what happens this pupil size starts increasing outwards so what happens the pupil dilates and it becomes bigger in size so that maximum light can enter inside and we can see clearly even in dim light so and if we stand in a area where there is bright light so what happens if suddenly you come in an area where it is bright light then the uh, pupil shrinks in size its size starts decreasing now when its size starts decreasing then less light can enter inside the eye and the eye lens is not affected so what does the pupil do it controls the amount of light entering the eye and the light is controlled so that the eye is not affected so this is the function of the pupil and the iris iris is the colored part of the eye now one thing we discussed in the human eye is that the human eye has got a blind spot and it has got a yellow spot apart from this the layer of the eye which is retina it controls the sensations which are falling on the eye and these sensations form the image on the retina the sensation which is felt by the inner by the nerve cells are then transmitted to the brain through the optic nerve on the on the retina and in the inner part of the eye there are two types of cells the first type of cell is called the cone and the second type of cell is called the rod first is called the cone and the second is called the rod so these are two types of cells which function differently the cones are sensitive to bright light that means they work when the light is very bright and the other is the rod which are sensitive to dim light that means if we are in bright area then the cones start functioning and if we are in a dark area then the dim light in that the the second type of cells function where we will feel this if we are inside a cinema hall inside the cinema hall it is dark so as you enter the cinema hall you are not able to see anything around because it is dark so when we are in a bright light then one type of cells are functioning the cones are functioning but we enter inside a cinema hall it is dark everywhere around so we are not able to see things for few seconds after few seconds then we are able to see things around because in this time span the cones which were functioning they were able to function in bright light and then we are not able to see things around but when we remain inside dark area for some time then the rods start functioning and when the rods start functioning then we can see things around us and we are able to see the things clearly now if from a dark area we come into a bright area then again the role of the two type of cell changes so besides cones sense color at the junction of the optic nerve and the retina this we discussed that there is a blind spot this blind spot is least sensitive part of the eye